Well, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Thank yes, thanks yeah. for having us. I'm, I'm excited. excited. Yeah. 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 It's been, I think we, when we were looking at it, uh, it had been almost a year to date mm -hmm. since the last time you were on, which is crazy. A lot's changed in the business really in the last few months. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But th let's talk first kind of before we talk about the, obviously the new move that just happened, talk a little bit about kind of uh, what the rest of the year, because we, we had you on September of 2023. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what did the rest of 2023 look like for the business uh, for, f for one man's vintage? Do you, you want to talk about it? Oh my gosh. Uh, I think, year? yeah, back half of last year, I feel like just recently, like as obviously the business progresses every, the whole month's just become like one long yeah, day. It's just a big blur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a big blur. But um, I do remember uh, quarter four of 2023 um, was kind of like our best quarter yet. Wow. Um, we were doing really well at the shop. I'm still doing like local markets. Um, still had a holiday version of our vintage market mm -hmm. as well. That was in December, um, right? That was in December, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was just kind of like our first official, like full year in our, um, in our storefront in the back hallway with like the addition of the third mm. space and everything. So that was like the official first full year of okay. like no renovations or anything. We're just kind of like, just kind of coasting. Just there and yeah, like en enjoying yeah. the space. Can you get getting the word out about wh what y'all are doing? Yes, Cause at yeah. the same time, like you're still, it's fairly new into the, into the vintage markets and, mm -hmm. and, and that's a big part. So I think right when we had you on last time was like four or five days when after, after the release was when you had a vintage market in September last year. Yes. How has that kind of propelled the growth and maybe kind of helped with this new move to this bigger space? How has the vintage market kind of uh, elevated what one man's vintage here in Huntsville? I would say it's helped a lot. It's, it's helped tremendously. It's just nice to have a like community event mm. that people also associate us with. So it's nice it's, it's almost like we're teaching people about vintage and people are like vintage market. I may not know about one man's vintage, but I've heard about this vintage market. Okay. What is that? I go, you know, they go yeah. there and we've had multiple people come up to us while we're running and they're like, Oh, do you, you guys host this? And we're like, <laughs> yes. And they're like, Oh, that's so cool. And we're like, Oh, we also have a space downtown. Yeah, like, like it's just two blocks away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, we didn't know. Like that's now awesome. we, now we know. So it's almost like we get to teach a bunch of people just mm. about vintage and show them kind of, what we do on a large scale, yeah, and be for like, sure. you know, like if you're interested in this, there is a local spot you can come to and kind of experience this mm. still. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's helped, it's helped so much. I feel like all downtown Huntsville, um, TVL, they've helped us like get the word out about not only our market, but also us. So mm -hmm. people want to be a part of it. And that's super cool. Yeah. And we really, really enjoy that. Yeah. And for those that maybe haven't listened to the first episode, which I would, the first episode we did together, which I would definitely suggest listening to. If you're listening to this, you should definitely just pause it, go back to the first episode because <laughs> the lore. there's a lot of like background, but for those that maybe have, haven't, haven't listened to the, the, our, our first episode together, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and kind of talk like, are y'all originally from Huntsville and kind of just set, set the stage of who y'all are and what one man vintage is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I'm originally, uh, my name is Anna. I'm originally from uh, Chicago. Um, and recently moved to Huntsville, like about now, like three years, or three years, yeah. three years now. Um, and we kind of started one man's vintage, uh, off, off of, um, the kind of like the back end of like deep pop and like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those, uh, applications on like your phone and stuff that people okay. do and do like reselling. Um, and so we kind of like started selling locally at like low mill, um, and then kind of just grown our, our name from there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Caleb from One Man's Vintage. Um, I'm originally, I was born here in Huntsville, but I grew up in Rochester, New York. Okay. So it feels like I'm kind of back home <laughs> kind of in a, in a way, but I'm um, kind of like Anne said, yeah, we start online, start popping up at markets at low mill. Um, and then really just took something that we saw people really enjoyed and went to buy vintage. And we're like, wow, this is maybe something Huntsville doesn't already have that we can, yeah can give and we can do and enjoy it at the same time. So that's kind of how our little vintage shop has grown. Yeah. Right and there. like, I know during COVID you talked a little bit on the first time we had you on about just the growth that COVID actually had for the business. Like it was a huge uh, point for y'all where you had, you like realized everything had to be online. Like you would have had a lot of your stuff available to ship. And that kind of obviously has propelled the business continuously mm -hmm. since 2020, where now we, we sit in 2024, uh, you know, three or four months left of the year. Um, which is crazy, crazy to yeah. think about yeah. like time, so like, like, like when you mentioned just like the months, it just, it becomes one big blur. It's just like, Oh, like it's 2023. It's not like the September or, 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 or March. It's just one big, like, okay. It's just, everything's happening all at once. Yeah. It's happening quick. <laughs> 
talk a little bit about when the opportunity came for this new move uh, at the Clinton Road shops. Because th- this new move, I mean, it, it really, um, the impact it's going to have on your business, and, and we talked a little bit about it off air, the, the impact it's already had has is, is, is been incredible. But talk a little bit about how that came about and um, where this move is now. Yeah. yeah. I, I can start on yeah, that. Different. Yeah. So this move has actually kind of been in the works for a while. So I would say like a year and some change, we start looking at new spots. Mm. So one, one thing that was very important to us was just kind of stay in the downtown area, stay adjacent to downtown. Mm. So we looked at a few spots downtown on green street on site, Washington, I think right there. Mm -hmm. Um, We even looked here at Lincoln mill for a few spots. We looked off governors, multiple spots. So it's one of those things where we definitely knew we wanted to stay downtown, stay adjacent. Um, Cause that's, that, that had always been our dream just to be in a downtown spot and for sure be a vintage shop downtown. That's like always kind of what we saw ourselves as. So kind of, as we were looking at these spots and touring this, these spots, we're like, okay, that was, that was priority. Number one, just staying downtown. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where we've cultivated our crowd. That's where people kind of know us for. So we're like, we want to kind of stay true to that. Um, and then we got opportunity at the current spot we were at just to have more space and then we took that into consideration because we're like, we, we loved where we were. And yeah. we're like, we, you know, we didn't want to leave just to leave. We we're like, if we were going to make that move, we were, it was going to be something bigger and better. And so we're, you know, we're kind of juggling both of those ideas. And then we kind of just kind of decided to stay because one, it makes it easier for our customers. You know, yeah. if, if we move down the street or, you know, a few blocks over, they're like, okay, where's one man's vintage? Mm-hmm. I may not know where they are anymore, but it's like same building, just up front. So now you can find us, even if you didn't know we moved, yeah. you'll be like, oh wait, this is them right here. So that's kind of what we juggled as we were kind of looking for a new spot. Cause we, I don't, and maybe I'll let Anna talk about this. I feel like I'm going on a little too no, no, long, you're good, you're good. but like, um, you just want more space. Yeah. Kind of just to show everything we had. We had so much in, storage mm-hmm. that we just wanted to be able to bring mm. a lot more to people. So then I'll give yeah, it off I, to you um, there. Kind of going back to our first interview, um, our dream was always to have a actual storefront, like mm. something with windows and like have our own, own door. And so um, when the opportunity did come and we were like still searching for like uh, real estate, you know, kind of just browsing all of our options. Um, when the opportunity did come, come up, we were we really had to weigh heavy on, mm. you know, what was the best for the business? What did we see ourselves staying in downtown for an extended amount of time? Did we see ourselves moving to a new location? Um, because even with a new location, um, you, the, I guess when people try to find you and stuff, you'll lose some, some of your customers, you'll yeah. lose some of the customers with like, who are used to seeing you maybe once a year, twice a year, or I know our loyal customers would have, um, you know, come and searched for us and found us at our new location. But I definitely wanted to, you know, stay put and kind of, make sure, you know, the people who visit us maybe once a month or a few times a year, they're like, Oh, okay. I know they're in this building, but mm. now they're in a different location. Yeah. Mm. And, and that, that new spot is right there on Clinton, on Clinton. Like you're the front of Clinton road shops, mm-hmm. huge windows like that. I would, I would assume just the, the foot traffic y'all have now. I mean, you've been open in that new location for a week and a half. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Since <laughs> as, as we're recording this, you've been open for about a week and a half mm-hmm. in the new location, had a big grand opening kind of for it. Mm-hmm. Um, how has the, you talked a little bit about it uh, a second ago, but how has this, the volume at which people can shop now changed and how have you had to build new racks to hold everything? And, and, and what's that experience like now versus maybe what it was like in your old location? Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. yeah, we, uh, we doubled our hanging space. So in our old location, we were kind of juggling around 300 square feet. Um, and it was small, but mighty, mm. our, you know, our, our first little storefront. Um, but now we're, we tripled it. We, I think square footage wise, we yeah, tripled it. Um, and it, that just allows so like a chance for all the people just to kind of like s- search for crew necks, sweatshirts, mm. jackets, we're able to kind of extend our inventory, um, have a larger women's section. Um, and just so for people to come and, you know, check us out and, uh, you know, try on stuff as well. Now yeah. we have two fitting rooms. Wow. So instead of, you know, the one fitting room where people had to wait in line and stuff like that. So um, there's been a lot of great improvements that we've made just for this location. So we're, mm. we're really happy with it. Yeah. Really happy with it. I would add that as we were kind of building the spot and making these decisions, one thing was for our customers, what makes mm-hmm. it easy for them. Mm-hmm. Cause we had extra space that I think we could have made another rack or two, but we we're like, okay, 
changing rooms. Like that's a big thing. We want people to be able to try things on. Obviously I think our, in our first podcast, we talked about vintage doesn't always fit the same. Yeah. A vintage large may fit like a smaller medium. So we know that's very important for people to be able to try things on and feel comfortable, you know, with their purchase. Mm -hmm. So two changing rooms, make it very vibrant, make it very light and airy was kind of a, another goal of ours. So we just want to make it a, a better, almost a better experience, like still improve while yeah. also keeping the same one man's vintage style for that sure. People have been used to, but also being like, I walk in one man's vintage. This is cool. Okay. I'm in the new space. Okay. This is really cool. <laughs> right? Like they, they were already cool before, but now this is like, I see a improvement. We call it one man's vintage 2.0 yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Improvements and just making things easier and better for everybody. Yeah. And was there a, a area of the retail experience that you knew that your customers were really interested in having at the old location that has been the biggest hit with this new location? Obviously you're only a week and a half in, yeah. mm -hmm. but is there something that you could see that your customers, your loyal customers that were always like, I wish you had more of this, or I, I, I wish there was a larger selection of this that you've now been able to integrate into this 2.0 version of one man's vintage. Yeah, I would say right now, uh, our denim section. Um, so we have more car hearts, mm. more like Dickies, more cargo pants. Those have been a, a big hit. And I know mm -hmm. we're going to the fall. So people are kind of shopping for more uh, like sweaters and like more denim and more uh, like long pants as well. Um, I will say people love more space. Yeah. Like people love the more space and kind of be able to browse around. And I know our last storefront was kind of a little bit more intimate. Mm. So um, I think our customers feel a little bit more comfortable with kind of just be able to kind of browse around and not having to feel like on top of each other as well. So I think that was also a really big improvement. Yeah, I would, I would agree with the, I would take that and say like just more sections. So we were able to bring a lot of stuff we had from storage and make a dedicated section for them. So like we had a bunch of military wear. So like um, those kind of heavier jackets, camo, camo pants, and it, they were sitting upstairs just because they didn't have as much draw as as we thought they would so with this more with more space you know we were able to be oh we can do a whole military section mm -hmm. so the people who don't do come looking for it have that yeah um so that's kind of what we see in the future just having more dedicated sections for different types of pieces um kind of like anna talked about a larger women's section that's like women's 100 percent of the time dedicated section um even a out of season kind of section right now as we're going into fall we have all of our shorts and tank tops in one section because mm -hmm. we do get people still looking for those yeah. but obviously with a smaller space you have to be a little more efficient and a little more mindful of what you have out so maybe around this time last year we had to put up all the shorts and yeah. all the tank tops and maybe some of the tees to bring out the crew necks the sweaters but now we can leave those out so if people i remember one example uh, last year someone was going on vacation to hawaii they mm -hmm. were like i need shorts they were like we don't have them out <laughs> yeah. like it it's fall here, yeah. right? It's like, you know, 50 degrees right now. So that was something we were mindful when mm -hmm. we were building the shop, just being like, wow, we can have our all around, like seasonal stuff out all around now and not limit ourselves or our customers mm -hmm. to just what's in trend right now. Yeah. That makes sense. And like, how have you seen just the, the, the impact and the growth of vintage in general in Huntsville? change even maybe since we last had you on the pod I mean, it's only been a year but i mean you've been consistent with the with the vintage market you've consistently grown one man's vintage into this now you know 2.0 version that is bigger and better and has more options and um how has you have you have you seen the educational element of vintage kind of change and the sort of the atmosphere here in huntsville where you probably now see more and more people wearing vintage out that's a great question yeah. uh yeah i think um, I think our customers are smart. I think our, our customers are smart with kind of realizing like what's vintage nowadays, uh, and, you know, sh shopping local and, uh, kind of still doing the whole, um, shopping secondhand as well. Like mm. I, I do see that our, when we do get customers in, people are more like, okay, I understand what one man's vintage, what they sell. Gotcha. I understand what, what's going on here. And I think it's now kind of more with the, maybe like the older crowd where we're like, oh, hey, like we, this is vintage. Like, I think we still teach um, kind of like the older population of like, oh, hey, like this is kind of what vintage is. A lot of kids are wearing it, a lot of young adults are wearing it. Um, a lot of high schoolers are wearing it. Um, and I feel like it's kind of more transitioned to that. 
Um, but then we still get our out of towners who are like very much like, Oh, I'm from California. I, tr- I understand. Like I know exactly what's going <laughs> yeah. on. There's a, um, there's a vintage store on every corner. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It's, it's just kind of part of their life. Yes. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's really refreshing when we have people who are like, Oh yeah. Like I've grown around vintage for the past like 15 years. I know exactly how, you know, what the store is and what you guys offer. Um, and I think at that point it's kind of like collections now where it's kind of mm-hmm. like, okay, what, what is your collection like? How do you guys, you know, curate your collection? Is it more t-shirt based? Is it more, um, you know, older based? It could be like items from the 60s, 70s. Like now it's more of like what the collection as a whole is mm-hmm. instead of like what is vintage. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would assume too, I mean, has it, has it finding vintage and finding secondhand for y'all become tougher because of just that popularity and the more of the educational understanding of what vintage is maybe even locally, or even I would assume when y'all travel or go places, y'all are looking at secondhand places to bring, bring stuff back. Has it been tougher to find quality things or is, is there still a, 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 a multitude of options and places to find things that you've seen? Yeah, I would say it's still out there for sure. I, I think it has become tougher. It's one of those things where now you need to look at different places and like you kind of said, multiple avenues, mm. it's kind of, I, I think it's no secret, maybe 10, 20 years ago, like if you went thrifting, you could find a lot of inch, if you knew what you were looking oh, for, for like sure. that, that's no secret. Um, but now it's not quite the same as it was, you know, 10, 20 years ago. It's definitely more, you have to know what you're looking for and you have to go out purposefully and go find it. It's not going to be something you just come across anymore. Um, and we've, we've kind of had to adapt, I would say, if you agree with me, Anna, we kind of had to adapt with how we source and how we find inventory, how we get inventory mm-hmm. in. So that's why we've, very, we've really pushed our buy, sell trade. Um, you know, there's people out there that have vintage pieces that maybe they don't wear anymore. They're like, oh, I bought it maybe a few years ago and it just isn't my style anymore because everybody's style, yeah. you know, changes. And they're like, but now this is my style. Mm-hmm. So can I come in and can I trade? And we're like, yes, of course. Yeah. You know, that's, that's super cool. Um, it also kind of works into that recycling kind of sustainable aspect of this person isn't donating or throwing away their clothes or, you know, selling it or trading it with a vintage store, getting something they love. And then that store is now selling it to someone who will yeah. enjoy it, who maybe that's their style now. Maybe they swap styles kind of thing. So that's kind of what we've been pushing a lot lately, just trying to make sure people understand that, you know, you can come in, you can trade, you can sell as well. And that has been a way for us to refresh our yeah. inventory as well. Yeah, for sure. And it, like, I would assume too, like as, as you all travel or go places or just are following people on social media, there's probably vintage stores or curators that you really are love that maybe are a couple steps ahead of y'all. Cause as, as you've been able to grow it over the last really three or four years now, I guess, uh, you, you, you probably see vintage, uh, uh, stores or curators that have that, like you're, you're kind of aspiring to be, is there any, is there any of those that come to mind off, off the bat that are like, those are the ones, some of the stuff that you really, really like. Yeah. Do you, I know you have some like, Oh gosh. One's from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a, a store called uh, smiley's is smiley's vintage, uh, located in Rockford, Illinois. Um, his aesthetic, his shop, it's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. He has like his own building. Um, his logo was like a little smiley face and it's called smileys. And it's just like, it's, it, it just looks so cool. Like I mm. haven't been personally, but we followed, uh, mm. we've been following him on social media for a while. Like when he first opened the shop and stuff yeah. like that. So I know I love everything that he's, <laughs> he's done and, um, participates in. Um, and then there's one store locally back in my hometown. Um, so they're undisputed vintage. Um, and they're, they're more of kind of like um, lean on the more, more masculine side, yeah. uh, more kind of like unboxing. Right? Yeah. Undisputed, like, like the undisputed yeah. champion. Yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. boxing. More kind of like of. boxing side yeah. of things. Um, but they're like, you know, local hometown heroes mm. in my eyes and uh, everything they've done recently. And they're actually about to open their new storefront as well. Um, so it's just, you know, kind of taking those like home aspects and kind of like what they're into is always really aspiring just to kind of see like, okay, I see, I see what you guys are doing. Let <laughs> yeah. me see if I can translate that yeah. over here. Cause so. like, I would assume that the market, you know, Huntsville market is obviously different than the Chicago market, mm-hmm. but like so, some of the ways that maybe they approach the aesthetic element of it or the design element of it, they were like, oh, I never thought about curating something like that. Mm-hmm. It's probably something you're able to kind of figure out and incorporate into what one man's vintage is. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously as we were recording this. 
September of 2024. Um, what does sort of the rest of the year look like and some of the, maybe even the future goals for one man's vintage? Obviously you just had this big move, which is a huge, huge step. Congratulations on that Thank again. It, it, it's, it's amazing. But like, is there, is there future, is there other locations? Is there like, where do you see one man's vintage looking like maybe in the next three years or so? I'll start short term with more space. One thing we've always wanted to do is be a part of the community downtown. Obviously in our small but mighty shop previously, we didn't have much space. So all space was dedicated to operations. But now with more space, we want to partner with local charities and do clothing drives, food drives, where like we can actually have a space for people to drop off food, you know, canned food, um, dry food, even clothes, especially as it gets colder and actually give back to the community in a way that we weren't able to before. Mm -hmm. And obviously with more space, we can have a dedicated section for that. We can have a dedicated space and do stuff like, you know, drop off five cans of food, get 15% off um, a t-shirt or something. So short term, that's definitely what we want to do, especially as the holidays kind of start ramping up and just give back to the community and partner with a lot of nearby local charities. Um, that that's kept what first came to my head yeah. short term. Um, I know long term, um, another location maybe. Okay. Yeah. Another location yeah. They, thinking big kind of manifesting it at this yeah. point. Um, we don't know where quite yet, okay. but it, it could happen. Yeah. It could happen so. <laughs> the funny thing about that is we've had multiple people come in when we were in the back and ask, Oh, is this, do you guys have one in Tuscaloosa? Do you guys have one in Birmingham? Wow. And we're like, one that felt really good because yeah, like, thank you for thinking yeah. that this is professional enough and like, you know, big enough to have yeah. multiple locations. Like we're a chain, but we're like, no, like this, it's just us right now. <laughs> but that guy's kind of thinking like, hmm, if, if the, yeah. if the demand is there. there. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's something we could think about. So. Yeah. And I, I think it's cool too, because you mean just the way, the way Huntsville's even grown over the last year since having y'all on. I mean, the amount of people that you probably see coming into your store that don't live in Huntsville. Uh, and that are traveling for an Orion show, or you even had uh, talk a little bit about this. <laughs> oh, no. That is a great. Okay, you you uh, Matt Reif came yes. in yes. to One Man's Vintage mm -hmm. while he was here performing at the Orion. Yeah, yes. talk a little bit about how that came about <laughs> and what that was like. Can I go first? Yeah, okay. you can go first. You can so. Honestly, I didn't know who Matt Reif was. Okay. Okay. I didn't know who Matt Reif was until Anna told me about him. And we watched some of his TikToks, right? Some of his mm -hmm. I was like, he's kind of funny. I was like, yeah. okay. Um, and the whole week leading up to it, we were kind of like, how funny it would be if he came in or like some of his friends came in. And we're, we're like, what, what are the chances of that? <laughs> we're like, we'll, we'll look out. Um, but and then Anna, you can you can tell the rest yeah. of the story. I just went. My, I didn't know who the who he was yeah. at first. Um, I was a big fan of Matt Rife. Um, followed him a lot, like during like COVID era mm. and stuff, and like on his Wild and Out days as well. So um, I've been kind of following him for a little bit. Um, so like <laughs> Caleb said that he had no idea. So I had to be like, hey, this is what's going on with the Orion this week. <laughs> yeah. You know, just a hint, hint, like. Um, and let's just manifest, you know, let's yeah. manifest, you know, people yeah. coming in and people kind of just like, you know, maybe scoping us out. Uh, cause we are downtown. So yeah. we're only one of the only vintage stores downtown. Um, so I was just like, okay, maybe he's really into vintage. Maybe he's really into like a sweatshirt or something like that. Or maybe he just wants some Alabama gear. So, um, we had our intern miles at the time, uh, he <laughs> was working and I've, we also have like team meetings and stuff with our interns. And I was just like, Hey, this is who's going to be coming in, you know, just kind of keep your eyes yeah, peeled. Look out for yeah, look out. If you, <laughs> see, poster. Yeah, if you see a so man you, that looks like this, you knew he was going to come in. I didn't know no. he was going to come in. I was just like, I think he, I think he might like, yes. like, yeah. you know, like if you, you see him, if you see him, yes. be prepared. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. Um, and it's kind of almost going back to like when Jack White was in town. Yeah. He was walking around downtown. Yeah. Like, I, I think he went to Fat Sammy's yes, and he yeah. was hanging out down there late yeah. at night. So. And I saw him literally sitting on a bench outside of front of like sea salt there. Yeah. So I'm like, I know the celebrities will kind of be in the downtown yeah. area. So I'm like, hey, Miles, this is kind of who's going to be in town. Let's see if he comes in. And he's like, OK, cool. Like, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Then we get a text message. We're running errands. We get a text message from our intern. He's like, Anna, I think Matt Rife is in the store right now. <laughs> and he's like, I had to Google a picture of what his tattoos look like. So he's like, I think this is him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we drop everything we're doing. Literally sure. drop everything. Yeah. yeah. And we run to the store. We drive. We drive. Driven so fast to get there. And um, Matt Reif was just waiting in our store and be like, oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, so super um, cool. Yeah, he's. Did he end up getting some stuff while he was there? 
Did, did yeah. he wear it on like during the show or have, have you seen anything? Have you seen him post anything wearing something that that yes. from once? He did post. He, he bought some like country tees because he was doing like his Southern part of yeah. his tour. So I think he bought like a George Strait tee. Okay. Um, but he bought a lot. His friends that were also doing stand up at that time too, like the, his openers, mm -hmm. they bought some stuff and one of them did wear yeah. the LSU t-shirt. Because mm -hmm. um, he was from Louisiana. Because he was from Louisiana. That's so he cool. wore it for the opener. Wow. Um, and then yeah, later on, Matt yeah. Rife was on Instagram wearing one of our tees. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, his whole whole group, they bought a lot. We got a lot of compliments from him and we sold him or we gave him one of, uh, we had a Beatles ticket. It was like a reprint Beatles ticket from um, the Hollywood Bowl mm -hmm. or something for, for in the nineties. Cause it was reprinted in the nineties, right? And um, he had just done a show there and he was oh, like, wow. it was a great experience. And he was a huge Beatles fan. And he was like, would you guys sell? It was on our like kind of display yeah. only. He's like, would you guys sell that to me? And we're like, I mean, you already spent that much. Just go ahead and you, we'll give it to you. That's yeah, fine, right? That's Cause awesome. Because we, we like when people have connections to things, yeah. especially. So we're like, yeah, go ahead. Um, and so and, that, that's like kind of the lore of like why he's like standing up on a ladder. Oh, and yeah. Like yeah. Kind of I saw that. For, yes. Because, <laughs> yes. Cause he was, so funny. We told him he had to go get it, though. <laughs> yes. He's much taller than the us. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he, um, got his tickets for a show. So we took our intern and it was us two and we got to see his show at the Ryan on the, on the floor there. That's awesome. Yeah, that is so cool. I, I, and I, I, I envision that hopefully, and we can all three manifest it, but I envision that the Orion will somehow will find ways to partner with y'all moving forward and cool. having awesome. the artist. Cause I feel like a lot of the artists that, I mean, it's, it's this, this shopping vintage shopping secondhand is, is something that it's becoming, like, like we talked about earlier, much more popular. And I feel like it's, it's very popular within, uh, artists and performers. Yeah. Um, happened. and so I think if you can find a way, maybe we can, if we talk about it enough, it can happen. Yeah, but, uh, here, yeah for sure. Uh, and maybe we can have that, that partnership where, you know, when it's, it's a list of places that the artists get at the Orion that say, Hey, places to shop in Huntsville while you're here. And it's mm -hmm. one man's vintage for your vintage clothing and stuff like that, or secondhand cool. clothing. And kind of directing people there because I think that's that, that that's a huge thing. I mean, I think that's what a lot of the community, even not in even just the Orion, but all across Huntsville, finding ways to give back to each other is huge. Um, yeah. So we talked a little bit about kind of the future for one man's vintage. A big part we talked a little bit about it earlier too is the vintage markets. What's the future of that looking like, and what would you like to see that? Uh, and when is the next uh, vintage market? If people are listening and want to go. Yeah. Um, the next vintage market is still a TBA. Okay. Um, we're still working out a little bit. Um, it's going to be a more of a special edition this, uh, um, this upcoming one. So give, give them month, month ish. Yeah. Yeah. What? Like a month. Oh, month. Like tell them the, the month. Oh, you know? okay. So, uh, November. Okay. We're aiming for November. November. Yes. Um, so it might be a combination of like a holiday version and then kind of, um, our like wrap up of the fall as well. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're really excited to announce that soon. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think vintage market it's, it's grown tremendous, tremendously in the past couple of years. I mean, past year. Past year yeah. yeah. So, um, we're really excited to kind of see what the next year kind of looks like for that. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of people wanting to be a part of it and we've, we've done our best to add people. So for example, for this last one, we had a second row closure and added some vendors outside added a sponsor outside unclaimed baggage. That was new. That's cool. Um, mm -hmm. That's new from our last one. We we're partnering with unclaimed baggage to have them there. Um, and they dropped their vintage collection the same day. So they were kind of like, we were that's working cool. like kind of in, in hand in hand, you know, to reach that vintage community. Um, but adding more vendors, we want to do more partners with some local businesses. Um, we coordinated with OTBX and they had their Oktoberfest that same day. So a lot of beer specials. So do more stuff. We want to do more stuff like that. Yeah. But so far, what we've been able to accomplish has been really cool for the community. And we've got nothing but positive, you know, positive uh, remarks and compliments about it. People really enjoy spending the day downtown, find yeah. some cool things, explore. And um, so yeah, we want, we want to keep it going as long as people are willing to come and are enjoying it. We'll, we'll, keep, the, we'll keep doing it. Awesome. Well, I appreciate y'all taking the last little bit talking about kind of the, this, this uh, one man's vintage 2.0. I think you've had some pretty incredible things in the last year since we last had you on. So we'll, we'll have to have you on again this time next year. Cause I feel like there's going to be new, yeah. <laughs> more exciting things and, and 
and a, a, a potentially a lot of new things that have happened for one man's vintage. Yes. Um, if the vintage market is announced before this episode's released, we will have that in the episode notes. So if anyone's listening or watching and they want to find out the actual date, if it's, a, if, it's if, if it's been announced, it'll be there. Yes, we'll let you uh, know. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of the future. And if anyone's listening or watching and they want to uh, um, visit one man's vintage and shop, we'll have the, all, all the, the links and directions and everything and, and, and addresses in the episode notes and in the description of the video. But I appreciate y'all taking the time. Of course. Thank you, Thank so you for much. having us back on. Of course, yeah. anytime. <laughs>